The Rishi said, The messenger, filled with indignation on hearing the words of the Devi, returned and related them in detail to the king of the Daityas. Then the Asura monarch, enraged on hearing that report from his messenger, told Dhumralochana, a chieftain of the Daityas, O Dhumralochana, hasten together with your army and fetch here by force that shrew, distressed when dragged by her hair. Or if anyone else stands up as her savior, let him be slain, be he a god, a yaksha, or a Gandharva. The Rishi said, Then the Asura Dhumralochana, commanded thus by Shumba, went forth quickly, accompanied by sixty thousand Asuras. On seeing the Devi seated on the snowy mountain, he asked her aloud, Come to the presence of Shumba and Nishumba. If you will not go to my lord with pleasure now, here I take you by force, distressed when dragged by your hair. The Devi said, You are sent by the lord of the Asuras, mighty yourself and accompanied by an army. If you thus take me by force, then what can I do to you? The Rishi said, Thus told, the Asura Dumralochana rushed towards her, and thereupon Ambika reduced him to ashes with a mere heave of the sound, Hoom! Then the great army of Asuras became enraged and showered on Ambika sharp arrows, javelins, and axes. Then the lion, vehicle of the Devi, shaking its mane in anger, and making the most terrific roar, fell on the army of the Asuras. Some Asuras it slaughtered with a blow of its forepaw, others with its mouth, and other great Asuras by treading over with its hind legs. The lion, with its claws, tore out the heart of some, and severed heads with a blow of the paw. And it severed arms and heads from others, and shaking its mane, drank the blood from the hearts of others. In a moment, all that army was destroyed by that high-spirited and exceedingly enraged lion who bore the Devi. When Shumba, the lord of the Asuras, heard that Asura Dhumralochana was slain by the Devi, and all his army was destroyed by the lion of the Devi, he was infuriated. His lip quivered, and he commanded the two mighty Asuras, Chanda and Munda. O Chanda, O Munda, go there with large forces, and bring her here speedily, dragging her by her hair, or binding her. But if you have any doubt about doing that, then let the Asuras strike her in the fight with all their weapons. When that shrew is wounded and her lion stricken down, seize that Ambika, bind her, and bring here quickly. Thus ends the sixth chapter called The Slaying of Dumralochana, of the Devi Mahatmya in the Markandeya Purana during the period of Savarni, the Manu. The Rishi said, Then at his command the Asuras, fully armed, and with Chanda and Munda at their head, marched in fourfold array. They saw the Devi, smiling gently, seated upon the lion on a huge golden peak of the great mountain. On seeing her, some of them excited themselves and made an effort to capture her and others approached her with their bows bent and swords drawn. Thereupon, Ambika became terribly angry with those foes, and in her anger her countenance then became dark as ink. Out from the surface of her forehead, fierce with frown, 
issued suddenly Kali of terrible countenance, armed with a sword and noose. Bearing the strange skull-topped staff, decorated with a garland of skulls, clad in tiger's skin, very appalling owing to her emaciated flesh, with gaping mouth, fearful with her tongue lolling out, having deep sunk reddish eyes, and filling the regions of the sky with her roars, and falling upon impetuously and slaughtering the great Asuras in that army. She devoured those hosts of the foes of the Devas. Snatching the elephants with one hand, she flung them into her mouth, together with their rear men and drivers, and their warrior riders and bells. Taking likewise into her mouth the cavalry with the horses, and chariot with its driver, she ground them most frightfully with her teeth. She seized one by the hair and another by the neck, one she crushed by the weight of her foot and another of her body. And she caught with her mouth the weapons and the great arms shot by those Asuras and crunched them up with her teeth in her fury. She destroyed all that host of mighty and evil-natured Asuras, devoured some and battered others. Some were killed with her sword, some were beaten with her skull-topped staff, and other Asuras met their death being ground with the edge of her teeth. Seeing all that host of Asuras laid low in a moment, Chanda rushed against that Kali, who was exceedingly terrible. The great Asura, Chanda, with very terrible showers of arrows, and Munda with discuses hurled in thousands, covered that terrible-eyed Devi. Those numerous discuses disappearing into her mouth looked like numerous solar orbs disappearing into the midst of a cloud. Thereat, Kali, who was roaring frightfully, whose fearful teeth were gleaming within her dreadful mouth, laughed terribly with exceeding fury. Then the Devi, mounting upon her great lion, rushed at Chanda and, seizing him by his hair, severed his head with her sword. Seeing Chanda laid low, Munda also rushed at her. She felled him also to the ground, striking him with her sword in her fury. Seeing the most valiant Chanda and Munda laid low, the remaining army there became panicky and fled in all directions. And Kali, holding the heads of Chanda and Munda in her hands, approached Chandika and said, her words mingled with very loud laughter, Here, I have brought you the heads of Chanda and Munda as two great animal offerings in this sacrifice of battle. Shumba and Nishumba, you shall yourself slay. The Rishi said, Thereupon, seeing those Asuras Chanda and Munda brought to her, the auspicious Chandika said to Kali these playful words, Because you have brought me both Chanda and Munda, you, O Devi, shall be famed in the world by the name Chamunda. Here ends the seventh chapter called The Slaying of Chanda and Munda of Devi Mahatmya in Markandeya Purana during the period of Savarni, the Manu. <laughs>